Hi everyone. Thanks for joining today's NTOP Live on utilizing CFD fields for flow optimization. My name is Mikey Vlahinos. I'm a senior application engineer here at Entopology. Today's video, we'll start with a short story. Once upon a time, we had to use standard pipes, elbows, couplings, fittings, etc to bridge physical gaps between components and generate our pathways into and out of our flow devices. Nowadays, with advances in our CAE and manufacturing capabilities, the types of geometries that are available to us have grown immeasurably. We are no longer constrained to standard shapes, meaning we can greatly enhance the performance of our designs. Today's video will be a high-level walkthrough of the concepts and steps utilized to help generate and reshape your plumbing geometry based on CFD data. The main objective behind this is to utilize CFD early in the design process to help influence our design decisions, as opposed to primarily using it as a final validation and verification step. After the video, you should hopefully come away with a solid understanding of how you can incorporate these techniques into your own workflows and applications. So what does the process look like? Well, in practice, it's quite simple. We'll start off with an initial analysis. This can be anything from an oversized design space, like we'll see in an example to follow, or it could be more confined, let's say the interior of a cylindrical pipe. After the analysis, we export the desired output variables from our CFD software. This can be pressure, velocity, stress, heat flux, turbulence, anything available to us. Bring it into Entopology, in this case as a CSV file. We transform this data set into an implicit field that can begin to influence our design. We truncate this data set, let's say by removing regions of low velocity or pressure. We then generate and mesh a three-dimensional representation of this reshaped field. This new geometry, informed by our CFD, is then reevaluated either for continued iterations or eventually a final validation and verification. Again, our goal is to utilize CFD early in the design process. Before we get into the main content of today's video, We'll take one step back and look at a broad overview of the workflow in order to help you visualize the process behind the case studies and the demo file I have prepared for you. As mentioned previously, we effectively start off with a CFD analysis. We export the desired output variables into Entopology. And in this case, I've created a custom block or workflow that reads the data in and will immediately start to generate an implicit body once the predefined inputs are satisfied. At this point, we have our new shape or fluid domain. We then clean up the geometry, Boolean union it as needed to whatever other fluid domains exist, mesh the geometry, and send it back to ANSYS for continued iterations. Let's hop into a couple case studies. The first one is a bit simple, but for me was a feasibility study of this design iteration concept. The problem set up an objective was to find a geometry that will equalize the flow rate at each of the three outlets with a given inlet. Now, depending on where our inlet and outlet ports are located, the flow will have a natural tendency towards one of them. In this case, it was towards the middle port. You'll notice how a natural choke started to form in the center path in order to help direct flow to the outer ports. The process described above was developed throughout this case study and it began with an initial analysis in Fluent. I brought in the velocity field and got to work turning the data set into an implicit, truncating it, and ultimately generating a new three-dimensional shape to be iterated upon all the while monitoring the performance objective. After the fourth iteration, I was fairly satisfied with the progress of the workflow and the shape that was generated. 
I opted for final validation and verification to see where I was at. While in practice, I would continue iterating a few more times to further refine the shape and reduce the overall volume occupied, we can see that just after four iterations, the outlet flow rates are within 3.5% of the mean. While this shape looks intuitive after the fact, keep in mind that this case study is quite simple in nature. Skilled CFD and design practitioners might be able to conceive of these shapes at the onset, but as our product complexities increase and multiple design constraints get introduced, this task quickly becomes infeasible, as we'll see with the next couple examples. Utilizing nearly the same exact methodology as with the previous example, the next and more practical case study was done on a spray ball. These parts are most commonly used to clean tanks. They are inserted into the tank. Water or a solvent is pumped into the part to clean the interior. Now, depending on the configuration and shape of the outlet ports, the cleaning process can be uneven. As with the previous example, the objective here is to improve flow uniformity for a more even cleaning. Beginning with an initial analysis and iterating upon each subsequent part generated, you can see by the third iteration that we started to have fingers forming near the top half of the sphere. We're constricting the flow in these regions and encouraging it to exit out the bottom half. The image on the left will show the transformation through the five iterations I went through. While monitoring the flow rates at each iteration, I also utilized Discovery Live for rapid visualization of the exit flow rates. Once satisfied with where the model was at, I set up a final evaluation in Fluent and compared the results. The standard deviation of the outlet flow rate uniformity for the original design was 24 and for the final design was 14. Looking at deviation plots for the flow rates, we can see quite an improvement overall. Again, just from five iterations, the standard deviation of flow rate uniformity improved by 40%. Jumping straight into the software, we'll look at a different application that follows a similar design process. You might recognize this cross-flow heat exchanger from training we've done in the past, where we've set up and ran a conjugate heat transfer analysis in Fluent. The flow results from this initial analysis will be the starting point from which we'll continue. Before we jump into the details and blocks used, let's look at the main objective and goal. The objective is to reshape this standard cylindrical pipe such that we can improve performance of the heat exchanger by only altering the inlet and outlet paths the flow takes. The goal then is to ultimately generate new piping geometry that enhances the flow into and out of the heat exchanger. In this example, after reshaping the inlet and outlet sections just once for both the cold and hot domains and comparing those results in fluent, the pressure drop on the cold and hot sides decreased by 38 and 20% respectively, while the average heat transfer coefficient inside the heat exchanger core increased by about 34%. So now that you've seen the objective, the goal, and the outcome, Let's talk about the steps that got us here. As you might suspect, I started off by importing a CSV field. In this case, the velocity field associated with the cold domain. Right away, I knew I wanted to isolate two separate regions, the inlet and outlet portions going into and out of the core itself. Using two separate implicits, I'm able to isolate the points inside of the imported CSV field 
to further fine tune the lower bound or the truncation value that I want to use in order to generate my geometry. Once that's established, moving to the compound block, defining the interpolation, extrapolation, and more importantly, the lower and upper bounds, as well as the intersecting or main body, we can generate the new implicit or shape that will ultimately turn into our piping geometry. Before we continue on, let's take a look at the shape that was made and the transitions into the heat exchanger core. As a reminder, the red sections here are baffles or barriers that we use to keep the two fluids from mixing. Based on the imported flow fields from Fluent, we'll start to truncate or remove areas of low velocity. In a lot of cases, these areas or regions are going to be near our baffles or transitions into the core where we impinge upon a flat face. The transitions that form are going to help enable flow into the structure itself, improving performance. Cross-sectional view will help us see this as well as the shapes that will ultimately get generated and the natural transitions that form in front of these baffles. The first step in generating our updated geometry is to simply clean the implicit field of our generated part. This is simply done by meshing our body and then converting it back into an implicit. At this point, we perform a simple shell operation on the body. We're defining the direction that we want the shell to take place and the thickness of the shelled feature as seen by the pastel color on screen. Zooming in, we can immediately see that we have interference between what will eventually become our new piping geometry and the core and fluid domains inside. A simple Boolean subtract operation will help clean this up. There are two main sections we want to focus on as far as cleaning. The large protrusion that we have into the core, as well as some blockages that formed once this shell operation took place. Two implicits are used. The first one is the working design space. This trimmed off the majority of the intersecting pipe. The second implicit that was used was a simple extrusion. I took a cross section of the fluid domain inside the core and simply extruded it out. These two bodies combined with a Boolean subtract operation trimmed the transition of the pipe into the heat exchanger core. At this point, I wanted to see how it fits into the larger picture, or in other words, how it fits into the original pipe. First thing we'll notice is we'll eventually need to trim off the inlet section of this new pipe. A simple Boolean intersect, in this case, with a plane, here at the end, trims off that cap and gives us a nice working face to continue with. The next thing you might notice is we have some large gaps and cavities between our new piping shape and the original design space. So we need a way to effectively fill these locations pretty simple process in terms of creating what I called a, a negative volume. We effectively use a Boolean subtract along with our original piping geometry, the cylindrical shape, the pipe we created, our fluid domain, as well as the extrusion that we used. These three pieces together 
gave us our negative volume. A simple Boolean union then between these two bodies will give us our final piping geometry. The same exact process described for this cold inlet section was done for the cold outlet as well as the hot inlet and hot outlet domains. The next to final step would be to Boolean union these new piping geometries to the original design bodies. Our final step could be to import or apply a pressure field to the internal surface and then variably shell or thicken the pipe based on areas of low and high stress. From design to output, N topology offers not just a variety of ways to control aspects of your design process, but also a variety of ways to control where and how you choose to begin that process. By bringing simulation to the forefront of design, where it's more impactful, we can surpass the limitations of human intuition. The examples shown are just a small sample size of how I initially envisioned the power of this workflow. What can you see? Thanks for watching today's NTOP Live. If you'd like to see more or experience N topology for yourself, please feel free to reach out.